Well, we love rugby league every week, but what a round to celebrate our country's Indigenous culture, capturing some fantastic moments in our great game. And like always, there's plenty to talk about, so here's a look at what's coming up on Inside the NRL. The games go to sideline, so will the Storm's younger Smith stand up? Plus, Nathan Cleary has hit his straps for Penrith, but does the halfback deserve the Dally M points deduction? Panel debate. And West Tigers tumble to 10, so a Michael Maguire's halftime sprays falling on deaf ears. Yeah, very interesting there at West Tigers Camp. We'll get through that a little later in the show. Welcome back, Michael Chambers, Jamie Soward. Great to have you company. You're back. I am back. Welcome I just, back. I had a, an extended holiday for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Look a little bit different, actually. I don't. I'm fine. This is what happens in rugby league. What are you, what are you getting at? <laughs> Oh, just gonna say, I expect to come and see Robbie Farrow today. I heard about your broken nose. You look good coming. You know, makeup <laughs> so well. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, no, I hope you're. I hope you're okay. No, no, I hope you're okay, Katie. For those time? who don't know, Katie Brown broken nose playing for South Sydney on the weekend. Careful, can't even tell. Yours. But she's back next week. Apparently, tough. I like it. Oh, I don't know. It depends if I get picked. But anyway, let's talk about some more important news. NRL's Indigenous round. It was fantastic on the weekend. What was your favourite moment? I think the finishes from the wingers just keep getting better and better. You talk about Charlie Staines, you talk about Jake Avrillo, the way that they're finishing. The best rule that we've ever done is get rid of that quarter post rule because we're seeing some real acrobats out there. Absolutely. What about for you, Michael? Uh, for me, it was South Sydney. We know how much indi Indigenous round means to the players out at South Sydney. Obviously, a large conting contingency of Indigenous players to see Alex Johnston, uh, Cody Walker and Latrell cross the line. It was good to see. Yeah, mine was good Tony Staggs. I love the shake of leg. Can you do it? <laughs> Come on, see how we course, like, on the yeah. desk. Get up there. <laughs> yeah. I, I was actually uh, down at a, at a party um, just watching with a couple of mates and uh, to see him represent that, it, it's you practice it as an Indigenous man and uh, I come on. Did I you get up and have a come go? On. I did, I did. Yeah. Oh, when you see it, like I've spoken to Katie Walker about it, when you see someone else doing it, it's infectious. So yeah. uh, I know the Indigenous boys have brought it back and standing in the circle, but yeah, it was pretty cool. End of the show. We'll do it. All right. Sally's I like that. Cover. I like that idea as well. And also, I think despite the Broncos' loss, it sort of gave me chills too because you can see how much it means uh, to the Indigenous players and their culture. But moving on to the Storm and the Knights game, and we do have a man down, Cameron Smith, the game's goat. He's set to miss two to three weeks. Uh, with an AC joint injury. Craig Bellamy did say he'll miss uh, that time on the sidelines. But 27 minutes for the superstar hooker. Now, Michael, even if it is two to three weeks, he's 37 years of age, is this going to be an issue further down the stretch for the Storm? Are you kidding me? This is perfect for the Storm. He gets a couple of weeks off at a time when he gets recharged for the finals. Like, this is... The other clubs in the competition will be sitting back and thinking, oh, no, what's going to happen now? He's going to come in. He was playing well before getting injured. Now we're going to have a recharge Cameron Smith for the finals. Good luck. Okay. I think it's a good thing for the Storm. <laughs> you think it's a good thing? Yeah. Does this um, Does this sort of hurt his ability to play on in 2021? No. No. It no. depends how serious it is, if there's lingering effects. But I, I think... The, the mental side of it is what's, what's going to be the most pivotal for Cameron Smith. And if he gets a chance now to recharge the batteries and not wear himself out, I, I think it could help him. It's an AC joint. It's, he'll, he'll be fine. I think he'll have a week off and come back. They've got a pretty tough draw the next month. I think that he'll have a week off and proviso that he gets through all the testing, he'll be fine. And, yeah. and, and as for playing on next year, if he wants to, he'll be able to. You've been pretty spot on with your uh, predictions this year, so I'm going to hold you to that one. <laughs> need to make sure we pause that. <laughs> what show you've been watching? <laughs> He's been very good with his uh, coaching predictions also. Those coaching I, predictions. Again, maybe that's where I'm getting it wrong. But, Jamie, what about, is this just the perfect opportunity for Brandon Smith to, I guess, show his resume for 2021 at the Storm? Yeah, we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. That contract saga is a little bit interesting when they've got Harry Grant potentially to come back next year if Cameron Smith does retire. But Brandon Smith now gets a chance... I, I love the way that he plays, and there's no secret about that, but his emotion and the way, his excitement levels, every play he's involved, and now he gets a chance. People could soon forget he's the New Zealand hooker. Mm. He's the New Zealand test hooker, so I think it's a real opportunity for him now, he and Munster, to really steer them through this next couple of weeks. You mentioned the Brandon Smith uh, did come on our show four weeks ago. For those who do not watch it week in, week out, let's take a listen to what he had to say over his future with the Storm. Is there a chance, Brandon, that you'd want to look somewhere to play number nine? That's your preferred position. Is there a chance that you, you ask Melbourne for permission to look around? I don't know if I've got that power, so it'll have to be me, me um, manager doing all that stuff. I don't want to, um, you know, step on anyone's toes. But, you know, I definitely want to play number nine and um, whatever happens, happens. 
Yeah, I think it'll be a, an issue. It'll bubble along over the next few weeks and at some point it'll come to a head because I don't think Brandon Smith, Harry Grant and Cameron Smith will all be in the same, in the same team next year. Just, just can't happen. It's a lot of money in the salary cap for three guys. I know the Storm would love to keep them, but Brandon Smith, to be fair to him, he's been waiting in the wings to play hooker. and He's been quite respectful. He's been quite patient. I think it'll be a little bit of a slap in the face if he goes back next year and Harry Grant's the number nine. I'll say this. Harry Grant's had a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. And this is this no disrespect to the young fella, but Brandon Smith's done it for longer. His body of work has proven that he will be the next number nine for the Melbourne Storm. And one thing you know about the Melbourne Storm organisation is they are respectful to those people who have bided their time. You look at Pappenhausen, they didn't rush those guys through. Brandon Smith will be the next number nine in Melbourne. OK, fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I just think he's so versatile that it'll count against him. I think Craig Bellamy will try and get in his ear and say, mate, you are too valuable to this team to be coming off the bench. We need you as our 13. If you can't be our nine, convince him that, you know what, team first. And maybe he does. Maybe Harry Grant and Brandon Smith can work in the same team. But yeah, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that he'll be the number nine next year. Can I throw a spanner in the works and ask you off the top of my head who he, where he goes, Brandon Smith, if he doesn't stay at Storm? Is there a club that you would yeah. Trent Barrett should ring, if, soon, if Harry Grant goes back, Trent Barrett should ring Brandon Smith and say, how much do you want, how long do you want? And get him to the Bulldogs. He would be perfect for the Bulldogs. Oh, he's, an, he's obviously a, a fit straight into the Harry Grant shoes at the Tigers as well. He could, he's got the relationship with Michael Maguire from the New Zealand team as well, so that could be an option. I think the Tigers wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mind that if that was the... Couple of the, options. The, the backup option, yeah. We won't start any rumours though, will we, gents? We'll, we'll move <laughs> it on to the opposition. And looking at the Newcastle Knights, we did see Adam O'Brien was not very happy after their loss last week. But seven days later, here's what he had to say to media. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do at the end of the day. And I, I haven't built it on excuses or given them an out, but well, seven guys out of the team. Seven out of the team that you would pick, you know, experienced guys at the start of the year. You take seven out of any team. Take, take seven players out of a top four team and ask them to play another top four. I don't know if you'll get a more courageous effort than what we got. Thought we matched them for toughness and grit, you know, and heart. I'd like to think that they thought we'd give them a game of footy tonight. Yeah, Jamie, do you think that they were a better side this week? Yeah, definitely. That, that attitude, if they had turned up with that at home last week against the Bulldogs, they would win the game. They wouldn't find themselves teetering on the bottom half of the eight. What Adam O'Brien's doing up there, he's in for the long haul. He's trying to prove to his team that we can compete with the right attitude. We can compete against the top teams. That hasn't been the problem for Newcastle. The problem for Newcastle is that he spoke his own words, that self-entitlement of against the lower teams that you're expected to be turning up and thinking you're going to get the job done. Some of this vision is outstanding footy. Look at this pick up from Tuala being able to score in the corner to give them a chance to try and rescue the game. But it takes time. You don't just instill that in one season and get the biscuit straight away. Are you at all worried about Callum Ponga and the way he's playing and the sort of... Has he regressed since the start of the year? I don't think he's been as dynamic as last year. The, the one thing about the NRL is people work you out pretty quickly. And I think his opportunities are limited this year as to what people were giving him last year. You know, you give him half a, a gap last year and he was able to take it. This year, teams have, have had a chance to look at him. They've played him three or four times now. They're working him out a little bit more. So that'll come back to Pierce and O'Brien on how to work him out to get him better ball, get him better opportunities. Does that come down to their attacking style? They haven't scored more than 20 points in the last six games. Is that part of the concern around Cullen Ponga? Um, no. The, the problem is that there's still a couple of pieces away. They lost their first choice hooker in Jaden Braley, which was, you know, the service that he provided, Mitchell Pearce, was second to none for what they needed. And then Kurt Mann, he's having a fantastic season, but I think he's a bit more of a utility. And this is the Melbourne storm we're talking about. I've, I didn't beat Melbourne in Melbourne for 10 years or 12 years. They make you do things that you're not used to doing in your game. And I thought we saw that a little bit yesterday from the Knights and Carl and Ponga. They can correct the ship pretty quickly, but I just think you saw some frustration yesterday and it became more desperate because of their performance last week. All right, so with their run home, let's take a look at their last eight games. Do you both think confidently they will make the top eight? I think they will be. I think they will. As Adam O'Brien mentioned there, that's the run home. Yeah. I don't think it's too difficult. Obviously, they can win. I think the next five games are, are winnable for the Knights. You know, they should probably win three or four of those. And then you head into the Roosters. That, that's the real test, the Roosters. Adam O'Brien up against the club he left. And then 
finish it off with a pretty easy finish with the Dragons and Titans. So, to me, if they miss the eight, there's some alarm bells at, at Newcastle. Yeah, I don't think it's as clear-cut as that, Chamus. You have a look at that. Whoever loses this weekend out of the Tigers and Knights, season done for me. Season uh, done. Manly, we don't know what's going to turn up, whether they put their shoulder pads on and come out and defend like they did against Parramatta or not. Yeah, Cowboys, Warriors, they're winnable games. Sharks, definitely. Roosters, they'll be getting ready for the finals charge. Sonny Bill and co. will be back. Dragons have shown they can attack and they should. Look, they should. Um, but I think this weekend is their their grand final. This weekend, if they win, they propel themselves into the eight and they go on a bit of a run. If they lose, it's going to be hard to make up. All right, fair enough. Well, there is only eight more rounds of footy to be played before we get into the finals. And before we do move on, just from that uh, Knights and Storm game, there was a lot of uh, talk around whether or not there were too many people with the coronavirus protocols and uh, security in place, but the crowd numbers were just under 5,500 and they were, in fact, in line with the protocols. So nothing illegal. Um, this Saturday's match with the Storm and the Bulldogs, though, it will be capped to 1,000 less, um, nothing over 5,000. So that is less than half the capacity at the stadium up there in Queensland. What a fantastic stadium. Isn't it brilliant? Like Chris Flannery, I know that he's involved with the Sunshine Coast Falcons. An amazing job. That, that's yeah. NRL quality level. That's hosting NRL games. I love the fact that we're taking games there. Obviously a difficult year, but I love the fact that you can have that view for an NRL game. It's awesome. And how good for the Sunshine Coast as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> Frothing all the footy up there. OK, uh, today is, of course, the deadline for player transfers. Michael, is there any last-minute player transfers that you're aware of? Yeah, well, Tor Toronto Wolfpack, Ricky Latelli, has been in the news the last few days. The NRL yesterday morning said he was able to take up that contract with the Storm. The Storm haven't put in the paperwork yet, but I imagine Ricky Latelli will be at the Storm uh, in the next couple of days as well, the transfers today, but they just have to finalise the paperwork and he'll be there. What a pick-up. Yeah. What a pick-up. Like, Especially with Momorowski now injured. So. Yeah, and then some depth in the outside centre as a premiership winner and, you know, defensively he's going to be on as well. That could be the final piece of the puzzle for them. And just before we do move on, a little bit of news around Ryan James maybe going to the Canberra Raiders, waiting on that one? Yeah, surprise, obviously, that you, you thought he'd finish his career at the, uh, the Gold Coast Titans, but he's now waiting a medical clearance to to continue his career at the Raiders next year. So hopefully for Ryan James, with those knee concerns, he'll be fine and probably finish his career as a Raider. Yeah, fantastic bloke. So it's good to see, hopefully, that he does get another two more years, at least in the NRL. Now, Jamie, your sweet or soured? What yeah, is it this week? Sweet this week, very sweet. Uh, you <laughs> talk about Indigenous around Katie and Chamus, but I just love the fact that every NRL club uh, went to the effort of designing these jerseys. Some of these jerseys and the way we presented our game with the welcome to country at the start of every game, the boomerang uh, unification from the players. I love the fact that we're acknowledging this, Chamus. You know, you see Moses Enbai and, and Adam Blair there. The players... The, the organisations make the effort and the players make it all come together. Yeah, terrific job. Obviously, the jerseys have come a long way. Obviously, I think at the start with Indigenous Round, I don't know if all teams even had Indigenous Oh, I'm very jealous jerseys. of some of the jerseys yeah. that have come out. You look at the Penrith one was great, Brisbane one was... Everyone went to a real effort and I think, you know, acknowledging that the past, present and emerging leaders within the Indigenous community is important and we already spoke about Katoni Stags when you see stuff yeah. like that. That's pretty infectious. I couldn't pick a favourite jersey, actually. I love the Warriors too. I know that was... My favourite, and I'm still chasing one, Manly people, is the Cliffy Lions one from last Oh, yeah, year. last year. I oh. need to get one. I would, it's the only other jersey that I would have hanging in my house is the Cliffy Lions one. Put the last. call out. I have. <laughs> Kazo, look after me. <laughs> Please listen. Now, you pair are going to go over to the touch screen. Um, uh, we're going to get in that just a minute. It, but you want to talk about one of the favourite halfbacks, Jamie, and I know one of your favourites is Nathan Cleary. First off, though, in the Eels' narrow win over the Bulldogs, Graham Manisley had to speak to media a little earlier just to clarify the ruling around Mike Acevo's pass. You can see as he runs towards the touchline, he's got it in his right arm. And just, I just ask you to look at the motion of his right arm as he throws it and where his arm goes, his, his hand in particular. So he kind of pulls it back around his body and then his hand comes right around in front of his chest. Um, now, the ball, in some kind of um, way that I can't explain, uh, the ball seems to do a, like a go on a, a banana path. It goes uh, uh, on some kind of arc when he throws it. Looking at that, I think it would be a, a, a tough call, well, A, a difficult call for the, for the officials to make, and B, I think it would be a tough call to make uh, based on the action of the player's arm. 
Well, Jamie and Michael, I can hear you both scuffle. I'm assuming you don't agree with what Graham and Isley has said. Well, I'd like to see Sour with the banana pass. It would have been interesting your repertoire to your uh, attacking yeah. Arsenal back in the day. We need Graham and Isley to explain every forward pass that's happened this year. <laughs> if that's how he's going to explain it, <laughs> banana pass. But uh, I think that could have been a penalty at the end. I think yeah, very lucky, silly Michael to see Sever. that. Yeah, very lucky. There you have it. Well, let's get to the touchscreen, Jamie. We, talk, we spoke about Daly Cherry Evans a few weeks ago, and you said he was the best halfback in the NRL. Nathan Cleary on the weekend, he put on a masterclass. Give us an insight into what he did so well. Yeah, I, do, I still think Daly Cherry Evans is the best halfback in the world, but Nathan Cleary is playing at a level at the moment that we haven't seen from him, and probably his development's taken over the years. You see, the first couple of minutes of this game, they put a kick in behind George Tafua to bring him up, and that starts to panic George Tafua. The next time they go down, it's a little two-pass play at the back, and if you just watch Cleary here, he's got Parker already up, and his vision is already split to be able to try and get these guys to come up. Now, George Tafu was just out of screen, but as the play unfolds, George Tafu comes up and in. It's a great pass, great finish from Staines, but it's the vision of Nathan Cleary to be able to get that pass on. It's not just the vision you, you, you've spoken about, the confidence of Nathan Cleary at the moment. We saw it later in the game with the grubber for himself. Can you go through that play with us and why he does that so well? Again, he gets it two passes wide. They've already got the game's pretty much wrapped up here by the Penrith Panthers. But again, Cleary's playing with such a level of confidence and arrogance to his game that he knows his kick's going for himself. They've got the players here turn their shoulders. He can see Elliot coming across. He's already turned his shoulders. A wet night down there at Brookvale. He kicks back for himself. And that's just the sign of a player that has the confidence, not only in the players around him to be able to put players on, but in his own, in his own game as well. Makes you feel good that your career ended at this hands of this <laughs> bloke, doesn't it? The fact I played he... one game with him and it's glad to see him kick on because I'm very happy in retirement watching him kill it. <laughs> well, there you go, Katie. <laughs> Nathan Cleary at his best. Absolutely. As always, gents, I love your work. Thank you very much. We will get to Nathan Cleary in hit or miss as well. But for now, it's time for this week's Casualty Award brought to you by Go Healthy Vitamins. As we've mentioned, Storm skipper Cameron Smith will be sidelined for two to three weeks with an injury to his AC joint. Bradman Best's ankle looked worse for wear on Sunday and the Knights will be sweating on the outcome of the scans for the teenage centre. Bad news for Manly, Dylan Walker has suffered another fractured foot that will keep him out for four to six weeks. However, it's not the same fracture that had Walker sidelined since round six. Teammate Curtis Sirinan's knee isn't as serious as first thought. The forward flared up a pre-existing injury and will be monitored this week, while teammate Brad Parker copped a head knock that will have to pass HIA protocols. And Panthers fly Charlie Staines will be out of action for up to three weeks, suffering a low-grade hamstring strain. The club won't risk playing the winger early. And in other injury news, the Roosters will be without Josh and Brett Morris for one to two weeks. Jackson Ferris' debut for the Sharks has turned sour. The centre will miss four to six weeks with a medial ligament injury. However, Josh Dugan, Matt Moylan and Jesse Ramian are all expected to be available, the trio returning from hamstring injuries. And in some good news for the Cowboys, the club confirmed Michael Morgan is a big chance to return in time for Sunday's clash against the Titans. The club captain hasn't played since round two in March. And that's this week's Casualty Ward brought to you by Go Healthy Vitamins. It's now time for Hit or Miss. OK, Nathan Cleary's Dallium deduction is fair game. Before I ask if Hit or Miss, for those who are not following, uh, Nathan Cleary did get six points deducted from his uh, Dallium tally for his off-field, um, I guess, incident in the shutdown period, his infamous TikTok story. So this happens with any NRL player. You lose three points per game and, of course, he was still down for two, so he misses six points. Is it fair game? Hit or Miss? I'm going to go with you, Jamie, because Michael's just I'm still going to stir the pot mind. for a while. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Miss. But, yeah, I just think that, you know, you look at what he's been able to do and, and it's if it's on field and you head eye someone and you miss two weeks, then I can understand that. But I'd hate to see him lose it because of one little moment of madness. But what does... OK, OK. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Michael? Yeah, it's miss for me as well. I think, uh, look, regardless of whether it's a moment of madness or not, if it's a moment of madness on the field, then that's the rules. But I think off-field indiscretions, and really, in the grand scheme of things, like it's an indiscretion that we wouldn't even have thought of 12 months ago. I know he broke the rules and he lied to the NRL, but to me, the award is based on on-field, and 
I would but like is to it? Guys have That's the question, because has it happened in the past where well, points have been lost for off-field discretions? Katie, well, I would love to think that the biggest award in our game is judged by what happens on the field. And we're talking about everything. When, when an immortal is judged, it's judged on your performances on the field, regardless of what's happened off the field. So I think that we should be judging his performances on the field. Well, yeah, I think if it's a bad enough off-field indiscretion, you wipe yourself out. Like Mitchell Pearce, a few years ago, got eight weeks. He was out of the LM contention before he even started, regardless of whether you deducted points or not. To me, the, the setback for Nathan Cleary was the fact that he missed two games and couldn't poll points. I think that's setback enough. OK. You disagree? I'm not, no, 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 I'm not disagreeing or agreeing. It's not my part to, to play in this game. It's you two, so you have to make the tough decisions and you both said miss. All right, uh, Joseph Suwali should be allowed to play in the NRL before he turns 18. Um, yeah, I thought long, this is a good hit and miss this week. Uh, <laughs> I'll say miss. I'd love to see 18, probably the age limit. And you, having spoken to Wade Graham and read some of the articles around him and his debut, I think everyone develops at a, a different rate, obviously, and Suwali looks like he's a, a, certainly a big enough body to be able to do it and, and talented-wise, but I'd hate to see him come in. I think if Jordan Rankin a couple of years ago was 16 and nine months, and I don't know whether that stardom and also the, the development of his body after that was able to keep him in the game. He's over in the Super League now and, and tried to come back for a little bit, but, yeah, I just I think 18 might be a better age. I'm going to say miss. I, I think the year you turn 18 is a fair outcome because... You grow up playing against that age group, you know, you're under 18s. If you turn 18 in January or turn 18 in December, you're in the same year group. So I think whenever you turn 18, if it's in that calendar year, then you can play rugby league even if you're 17. OK, so you don't really stand by the if you're good enough, you're old enough? Well, I do. I, I just think 16's too young. But, yeah, if... Well, you if, can't if, stand by it if you think 16, you're either against it or you're not. Well... I just think under 18 is fair. 17 is good. So I can't believe some people play at 16. Freddie obviously did it many years ago. Ranking of the game, the game's a lot different now to when those guys debuted. You know, the, the game's fitter, faster, stronger every single year. He's, he's not playing against 18-year-olds. He's playing against men that have been playing first grade for a long time. What does it do? Wait until you turn 18. If someone turns 18, I think Sawali turns 18 in August next year. What is it actually achieving if you're making him wait three more months? Like, is it really changing anything? Like, if let him play from round one. He turns 18 that year. OK, fair enough. Uh, this leads us to our next question. The Rabbitohs should be doing more to keep Alex Johnston. Uh, miss for me because they'll get Suwali. <laughs> 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 they'll get the extra cash for Suwali. Look, Alex Johnston will, will have no trouble picking up the club. His performance the other night, the way he reads the game, he's versatile. I, I don't think that he'll have uh, any problem getting a club. Yeah, it's miss for me. They've, they've decided to keep Latrell. They obviously got Suwali coming through if he stays. I think there's no room for Alex Johnson on the money he deserves if he stays at South Sydney. So, to me, it's just a business decision. You can't have Suwali, Johnston and Latrell on the same team chewing up big dollars. So, yeah, for me, miss. OK. There he is. Oh, oh we've, we've got that coming up in Champ or Chump, this <laughs> try, actually. Uh, moving on, the Wooden Spoon race is not yet decided. Let's take a look at what we have the last five on the graphic there. The Warriors, Cowboys, Titans, Bulldogs and the Broncos, hit or miss? Um, yeah, it's, it's... I think it's down to two. I think the Broncos... Oh, hit. What's the question, Kate? I think it's decided. It's think... not decided. No, it's not, it's not decided, decided. Yeah. yes. But I, if I had to pick a team... It's out of the Bulldogs and Broncos. I think the Titans could, could upset the Cowboys this weekend. Uh, that puts the Cowboys back in. The Warriors, just through pure effort, the Dogs through effort, are going to win. I think it might be the Broncos. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Howie. I, I think it'll be the Broncos. I, yeah, I think there's just... The care factor will go more and more as the season progresses. The Dogs have shown they care. They'll keep fighting. They might not win every game, but they'll fight. So I don't see that fight in, in Brisbane at the moment. OK. And the last but not least, so you can take a breath soon, gents, because they're a bit flat today. Um, the halves puzzle is threatening to derail the West Tigers' season. Hit or miss? Miss. I think it's their their relationship or their attitude towards games. Mm -hmm. the, the halves, for me, it should be Marshall and Reynolds, and I'd have Walters coming off the bench. I think that's a, that's a better fit. And it allows Harry Grant to empty the tank. And he's not trying to pace himself for 80 minutes. He's still learning how to play that, but... Benji Marshall has to be there if there's any chance of making the eight. It's a hit for me. Oh, this is a real concern for the West Tigers. It's not just the halves puzzle, it's the puzzle in general. I think players at the club don't know where they fit. And I, I get the sense that 
you know, we're, we're both fathers and we've obviously grown up. And when you get yelled at as a child, sometimes you get yelled at and you think, you know what, I won't do that in fear of getting yelled at again, not because you've actually learned a lesson. And I wonder if the West Tigers are in the same boat with this situation. They're playing in fear of their positions, in fear of being dropped. Are they actually developing and changing attitudes? We see them bounce back the week after or after tough decisions, but it's not happening long term. And I, I wonder if Michael Maguire, Michael Maguire's approach just doesn't resonate with the, the guys he's got in his football team. Hey, who? Name names. Who? Who's no, it's not, not fair to name. No, I, well, it's clearly not resonating with a lot of players there because sometimes they look like they care for the jerseys. Sometimes it look like okay. they don't even care at all. So. A month ago when he dropped, or six weeks ago when he drops Benji Marshall yeah. and they come out and play like that, yeah. Michael Maguire was praised for the way he coached and the way he made the tough decision. No, I, I was critical what's then, Yeah, but what's, but they won the week later. Yeah, because as I said to you, there, it's fear. And their whole attitude changed. They're playing in fear. The, so the, they played in fear for a month and won some games. Wasn't they beat the Brisbane Broncos for a few weeks. in fear, did they? Well, the Brisbane Bron Broncos aren't really Did the they beat the here. Brisbane Broncos for they did. fear? No, they did. Me and you couldn't, Katie could have beat the Brisbane Broncos. The question is, is Luke Brooks the halfback for the West Tigers going forward? He's going to have to be because he signed a deal there. Now you're adding questions. He doesn't have to be. <laughs> I don't think anyone is there comfortable. And I don't, I don't think the Tigers need comfortable. coaching style of Michael Maguire, I understand. And as a person that liked to cuddle as a coaching style, if they're not playing in fear, what's what's playing? They're not, they haven't got the consistent attitude that has been trained into them by Michael Maguire and then he's losing his patience when they don't beat the teams they're supposed to. Which this is why is they're in limbo. The players are in this limbo. This is a team I'm not saying it's that right or wrong, consistently shall we? misses the eight. Yes. Right? Fans want them to make the eight. He's made the tough calls, he's put the pressure on him. If the players can't respond to that pressure and consistently put in effort week after week, yeah. like they have when Benji Marshall got dropped, what, what's the difference from when they drop Benji Marshall and the effort they put in for the month after and they put themselves back in the premiership race for the eight to now? Are you saying that his coaching style has changed? Because I don't, I don't think, think his coaching style is going to work long term with that player. The, the way he adopted that coaching style with South Sydney, he had the hard nosed hey, players there champion. who wanted to win a comp. Champion. I don't think he's got those players there. It doesn't have to last a long time. And that's the last for them to get into the eight. And then if they get into the eight, they've got a building <laughs> block for next year. You just sat here, they're not going to get in the eight. I'm just saying that he's so coaching style. How long can style. you keep going the same way? Okay. If, if it's not working, I'll have the last word. His coaching style, Katie, <laughs> all right? needs to be long enough for them to get in the eight. He's frustrated at the fact that he's looking at his team, waste another opportunity and another year for West Tigers fans of them finishing ninth or tenth based off them not beating the teams they should. Of course he is, Sally. I'm saying okay. the players that he's got there aren't responding to the way right. he's coaching. Is that his fault? So they respond some weeks and not other weeks. All right, let's exactly. go. Let's move it on because you two could talk about this all day. But it's great to see you finally got some pep in your step. Uh, Jamie, while you're on your high, let's talk about power rankings. This week's NRL Power Rankings see the Melbourne Storm climb from three up to two after a couple of impressive performances. I had to put them above the Parramatta Reels based off the fact that they are playing with such professionalism and emotion, which seems to be carried on by Cameron Munster, even though there was no Cameron Smith on the weekend. Well, that's right. The ability to adapt on the run. No Cameron Smith in the middle of that game. They go on, Brandon Smith gets onto the field, and it's like you wouldn't know the skipper's missing. So that's the Storm at their best, the way they play on the weekend. They've camped away with their families. You feel like they're brewing to something special. I know they'll always be there or thereabouts. Outs, but it's a special team this year in 2020. The New Zealand Warriors continue to impress under Todd Payton. I think he is the man for the job. Such, I guess you look at the leadership that Todd Payton's shown through a difficult year, they seem to be improving under him though. Well, at a period in the year, they, you, know, you, you would forgive them for throwing in the towel. They are, they're improving. They're getting better at the moment and it looks as though they're finding confidence at a time where you, you'd think their minds would be about going home to their families. They've banded together and the way they've been able to hang in there, they've had replacement players come in, I think it's a bit of a note to some of the other clubs in the NRL. The West Tigers look like they're going to waste another season in the NRL. They dropped down outside the top eight of the power rankings and this just has a, a disaster written all over it. The way that they're playing against the teams they should beat is the West Tigers that we know. Yeah, and Sowie, they're going to regret these games. They've lost to the Titans now. They've lost to the Warriors on the weekend. They'll finish 9th, 10th again, and they'll look back at the season and think, you know what, those two games, they're four points in the bag we should have had if we played to our potential. So. Yeah, Michael Maguire, not happy at all, the West Tigers at the moment. Make sure you keep an eye out every Monday at midday for the NRL Power Rankings.
Okay, that was pretty tame. <laughs> we had I'm to a professional. Down. That went from 100 back down to 50. Well, that's how you be professional in the biz. You make sure that the next segment's your best segment. So oh, well, it was nice you. to see my mate get back in line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two will both feature on our next segment. Champ or chump, if you're not careful. Charlie Staines is our main target, though, this week. Um, he scored a double before he did come off with a hamstring injury. And watch him here. He has a quick little check, takes his shirt off, um, turns his head... Oh, yeah, posters down. Better stick that one back up. <laughs> How much do you love that? <laughs> yeah, champ, of course. <laughs> Anytime you, you get those photos. I never had the photos when I was playing, so... I was, uh, yeah, I wouldn't put mine back up, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> champ, though. He's, yeah, champ. Six yeah. tries. Hey, one and a half games. It's nice for him. Remind himself of how far he's come. He'd look up there and, you know, he's in a Panthers jersey. It's surreal for some people coming through the right grades. I imagine he would have been pretty proud to yeah. get the poster up. Yeah, and I'm told by the club, very humble winger. Mm. And obviously he wasn't doing that in any, um, I guess, cocky way. See how he's still got posters in his bedroom. <laughs> Go ask Maddie. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised you're not wearing your premiership ring. You should be wearing it every oh, yeah. week. That is a proud moment. Dragons Roosters this week. You should have wore it. Oh. Ten years on. Yeah, maybe. I might wear it for the uh, match previews on Wednesday with Good Betty. Idea. Yeah, nice. Like it. Okay, moving on to our next one. And this is an absolute classic. Dallin Martini's Olesniak can add him to the list of players who play the ball the wrong way. Have you ever done that, Jamie? No. Okay. I'm a half back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> More brains. Look, Dallin's a champion. But he's a chump this week. And I'll just say one thing about Dallin's game. I love Dallin. I've played with him. He's come up with some of the biggest plays I've ever been a part of in terms of gameplay. If he ever gets rid of that one mistake that he has a game, that excluded, he's going to be the best winger in the world. That's how good he can be. But he's just got that one mistake in his game. Bit of Kenny Dowell about him. Yeah. Yeah, just got some can do some freakish things. And but he's just got one yeah. one error a game yeah. that's cost him. Chump for that one. <laughs> we love Dallin here, but yeah, we chump do. in here. We do. All right, and finally, we saw Latrell Mitchell score a try on Thursday night in their win over the Dragons. We're just a bit concerned with how <laughs> hard he hit his head on the ground. <laughs> he's not the only one. No. no he's t well, he's one of his mates, uh, Josh Adokar, is also a culprit. A vision here of the winger copying it so harsh, he actually went off with an HIA. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's a thing. Maybe they're no, like, why? They're trying to, maybe they're trying to. I know they're close mates. They're trying to outdo each other here. There's some sort of competition we don't know about. The I'll old plank back them. in the day. I've been in the Latrell <laughs> Mitchell camp all year about him playing at fullback. So champ. <laughs> but that was chumpish. That was chumpish. <laughs> Correct. I love you, Latrell. <laughs> oh, at least he's scoring tries, right? It's fantastic. Oh, they need to be careful though, because yeah. 15 minutes in a big game, if you have to come off oh, you're dazed, imagine you that. scored a try. Well, Josh came off with one of them. It was actually um, Zach Bailey who gave me the heads up on all of these yeah. tries that they I were I don't know what it's called. Too. Maybe next week I'll have a name of what it's called. But if yeah. it, is it a trend? I don't it's want to. It's a post celebration. $5,000 more. Get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can spot it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right, a reminder, NRL Teams is back tomorrow at 3.55. There we go. There's our man, Zach Bailey, Robbie Farrar, not confused with today, and Brett Kamali, <laughs> Michael Chamis. So make sure you tune into that one uh, for all the latest team list news. Uh, we'll leave you with this, though, gents. Try of the year contenders, thanks to Drinkwise. We take a look at um, the from the 11 rounds, and I wanted to ask your favourites. Uh, we've passed the halfway mark here. Here are a couple of the contenders. James Tedesco, Clint Gutherson, Mike Acevo, uh, Ryan Pappenhausen. And we've got we've got one forward in there. We've got David Fafita. Uh, but who'd you pick? Who was your try of the year contender so far after the 11 rounds? Uh, I like the hammer against Penrith. That was a great try. Great try. Just the speed, the footwork, beat a few players. Here we go. Uh, he's a special talent, this kid. If he gets... I think he needs to get more involved in games, but you can see what he can do. Uh, when he does get the football in his hand. He's a very exciting player, I think, uh, at the moment. As an individual try, I really enjoyed that one. He's going to make a fantastic winger next year when Val Holmes comes back, uh, <laughs> but he's been very impressive. Ryan Pappen Rousen. <laughs> yeah. Check this out. This is unbelievable. Down at Canberra and gets beats one, but then just puts it into overdrive. This kid, he scored another one on the weekend. 
Uh, it's hard to believe, I know West Tigers fans, that he was actually in your junior system, West Tigers, uh, he and <laughs> Josh Adokar. So two of the fastest players uh, have been let go by the Tigers, but I love the way that he's matured into an NRL fullback. Yeah, my favourite was also Ryan Pappenhausen. I'm a sucker for a speedy try. I love it. I love seeing players hit their top speeds. OK, that's it from us. If you do want to vote, make sure you go to NRL.com to cast your vote for try of the week. All thanks to Drinkwise. Until next Monday, have a good one. Johnston, he's away kick. again here, kick. he puts the kick over the top, Walker's after it, ball bounces away, Flat Ebert trails there! Here's Palin Ponga, rubber kick, Pappenhausen, what a pick up, here we go, Ryan Pappenhausen, they're coming out after him, it's big hurt in this ASA, and here comes Tuala, are they going to get to him, no they're not, they try in vain, but Ryan for the Melbourne Storm. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Ryan Pappenhausen picked the ball up off his feet, mind you, right at his feet. Tracy going to wave Graham, holds it up, Talakai. Great pass, Mulatalo puts in a kick, Connor Tracy! The Sharks are in front, what about the skill? The kick, and then the pick up from Connor Tracy. Try awarded. Well done, the Sharks. Look up here with Lewis. They've got them shocked a bit. Cut out ball. It was in his Alesnia. Amarillo for the corner. Acrobatic with the put down. Oh, that's unbelievable, was. Jump from the field of play. Oh, we've and seen some good ones, but that is up there. That is amazing. He hits it, he's yeah. got it! He's got the 